Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is again from medical surgical nursing. It is pain. In this video, we will learn about pain, its features, and its nursing management. Let's get started. In the introduction of pain, we have pain is an unpleasant sensory or emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Pain is different from one person to another, individualized and highly subjective. That means the data of pain can be a subjective data rather than an objective data. And pain may or may not be related to type of injury. Pain can occur when there is an injury, also when there is not an injury. In types of pain, pain can be divided on the basis of duration. On the basis of duration, pain is divided into acute pain and chronic pain. Acute pain lasts for less than six months. It is generally not associated with tissue damage. Or if there is tissue damage, there is a limited amount of tissue da damage, like minor injury, minor wound. Next example is mild headache. If acute pain remains unrelieved, it can progress directly to chronic pain. Next type is chronic pain. Chronic pain lasts for longer than six months and it has a mild to severe intensity. It might also last for years, years long inside the body. It always has an identifiable cause. That means chronic pain is associated with some systemic illness in the body. It is associated with symptoms like anorexia, insomnia, weight loss, hopelessness and anger. That means these symptoms are symptoms of those diseases that has caused the pain. Pain along with these features can be seen together in one patient. Based on location, pain can be divided on divided as headache, back pain, joint pain, stomach pain, and cardiac pain. These are the locations of the body, head to toe. Based on intensity, Pain can be divided into mild, moderate, and severe pain. Mild pain scale reading ranges from 1 to 3, whereas moderate pain scale ranges from 4 to 6, and severe ranges from 7 to 10. We have a scale to measure pain. Actually, we have more than one scale to measure pain. We don't me measure the pain physically, but we ask the patient about what is the range of their pain right now. On basis of that, we obtain our data. That scale looks somehow like this. We will learn about other scales also. What is the name for this scale? What are the numbers that are used in the scale? But pain scale on an average looks like this. And below here is the score given for the pain. Starts from no pain, score 0, to worst possible pain possible, score 10. We give this to the patient and we ask them to choose a level. On basis of that, we write about our data. Based on etiology, next slide. Based on etiology, pain can be divided into nociceptive pain, somatic pain, visceral pain, neuropathic pain, peripheral and central neuropathic pain. Starting back from nociceptive pain, it is experienced when intact, properly functioning nervous system sends nerves so that tissue are damaged and requiring attention and care. Nociceptive pain is a, an example for nociceptive pain is pain experienced following a cut injury or a fracture, broken bone. After an injury or a broken bone, what brain does is brain sends messages in the form of neurons to repair that part or to react to that part. Body starts to react as a message, as response to the message sent by the brain. Once a stability is achieved in the body, that pain goes away. Nociceptive pain can be divided into somatic and visceral. Both soma and viscera are the tissues of body, internal organs, internal part of the body. Somatic pain is originated from the skin, that is muscle, bone or connective tissue. Skin also muscle, bone or connective tissue, that is 
sharp sensation of a paper cut that means if the pain has originated from the skin from the muscle due to external injury then that is somatic pain whereas visceral pain is activated from inside visceral pain can be cramping pain ache pressing pain like that example for visceral pain can be labor pain or angina pectoris that is originated from the viscera from the internal muscles this was all about somatic and visceral pain next is neuropathic pain directly associated with nerves okay sometimes when our nerves have been malfunctioned due to some illness at that time we will face this neuropathic pain in this neuropathic pain what we can do is we can treat the underlying disease so that pain can be treated this can occur in diabetic peripheral neuropathy due to long prolonged untreated diabetes diabetic peripheral neuropathy can occur phantom limb pain phantom limb pain is a pain that occurs in patient after amputation surgery the leg or the limb which is amputated patient feels like he or she is having pain in that part pain on that limb that is phantom limb pain next is spinal cord injury pain neuropathic pain can be difficult to treat even medically or surgically neuropathic pain takes a long time to treat again neuropathic pain can be divided into peripheral and central peripheral neuropathic pain occurs due to damage to peripheral nervous system damage to any part of the extremity that is phantom limb pain but central uh, neuropathic pain results from malfunction of the nerves example is spinal cord injury pain post stroke pain that is central neuropathic they are the etiological factors influencing pain pain itself is a symptom so we will discuss about etiological factors that influences the pain first is a developmental factors developmental factors can be age okay pain can be different on severity and intensity on the basis of age next is physiological factors they are fatigue gene neurological functioning inside the body factors is physiological factors basically social factors like attention previous experience family and social support spiritual factors social factors is the factors associated with relationship between the patient and the surrounding psychological factors factors related to brain factors related to functioning of the brain anxiety coping style all those things next is cultural factors cultural factors are the factors related to reaction of the pain how we react to the pain is highly dependent on our cultural background according to our culture we behave we behave with everything and everyone so if culturally we have a different reacting behavior to pain then we react differently to even a minor pain we are not able to tolerate even a minor pain because that culture has imposed some perception about the pain inside our mind that's why it is a influencing factor for pain next is sign and symptoms of pain pain itself is a symptom i said that these all are the associated sign and symptoms that is increased respiratory rate increased heart rate peripheral vasoconstriction that is constriction of blood vessels at the periphery pallor elevated blood pressure in the increased blood glucose level also diaphoresis that is excess sweating continuously dilated pupils moaning guarding the area restlessness and irritability while assessing the pain we can first of all assess precipitating factors or elevating factors we can also assess quality of the pain radiation of the pain severity and timing i will explain everything in this precipitating factors are the factors that either lessen the intensity of the pain or increase the intensity of the pain quality of the pain is in which amount at which time up to how much extent the pain is occurring in your body how is the pain harming your body 
that is quality next is radiation pain originated from one side might move to other side that is radiation mostly the abdominal cramps during menstruation radiates to our thigh similarly the pain originating in chest some of the pain due to cardiac disease originating from the chest radiates to our shoulder that is radiation severity severity is the timing till which pain is continuously harming the patient and the extent till which pain is continuously harming that part of body next is timing for how long does one pain episode last in that part of body sometimes pain has short episodes few short short episodes sometimes the pain is relieved after those short episodes while sometimes few times there are such kind of pain which is not relieved so easily so these are pqrst for assessment of pain also we can assess objective signs of the pain objective signs can be facial expression vocalization and body movement facial expression can be grimacing frowning and sad face we have a diagram for that patient also vocalizes the pain by crying or moaning if it's a adult adolescent older patient we can ask but if the patient is a child infant or toddler they have no other option than crying as they cannot vocalize their pain also if the patient is semi conscious and the patient has a pain patient will not able to vocalize the will be not able to vocalize the pain so we also need to see the expressions body movements as well as if possible we can hear the vocalization of the patient body movements usually the body movements are patient tries to guard the pain side by using hands by using arms patient tries to cover the pain side that is a natural response by the body or patient will have resistance to movement patient just wants to lie down or sit rest at a place they want to let their body rest rather than moving from one place to another this is grimacing frowning sad face that occurs all these occurs during pain next is pain assessment tool for assessment of pain we have verbal rating scale numerical rating scale and warm baker's faces pain scale this is a verbal rating scale you can construct this by yourself make a scale for you standard scale for you and use it to assess the pain you give it to the patient and ask them to choose choose a level this is a numerical rating scale this also we can make it by ourselves or we can use a standard scale and then we ask a patient to choose a number according to that number we divide the pain into mild no pain moderate pain and worst possible pain this is warm baker spaces pain rating scale used by most of the hospitals in this we have various kind of faces facial expressions we let the patient choose a face and then we identify the level of pain numerically we identify the level of pain management of pain first is pharmacological management by providing medicine next is non pharmacological management and then next will be nursing management start from pharmacological management we can give many kinds of medicine they are opioid non opioid and adjuvant opioid create pain relief by acting on opioid receptors of the body whereas non opioid acts inhibits actually prostaglandin synthesis and that reverses vasodilation adjuvants enhances immunity system in response to antigen adjuvants can be the medicine that we have heard on daily basis that we have seen somebody using on daily basis otherwise opioid and non opioid are not given so normally so casually we have who pain relief ladder which is very important to understand about management of pain they are the characteristics 
in each lad ladder the pain is persisting or increasing along with the steps increment of steps the pain is persisting or increasing and here are the description of medicine non opioid along with adjuvant or not along with adjuvant opioid for mild to moderate pain non opioid and adjuvant are optional and for moderate to severe pain opioid non opioid and adjuvant all can be used this is who pain relief ladder next kind of medicine that can be used are those all just uh, that just be read opioid non opioid they all were oral oral medicine but pain relief medicine can also be topical we can get topical medicine as in the form of cream in the form of ointment or in the form of patches that patches sticks to the skin and releases the medicine continuously they release some amount of medicine continuously if there is a pain in shoulder back part of the shoulder we need to paste that patch on that pain side and this releases some medicine which after some minutes or some hours will completely relieve the pain this is patches pharmacological patches next can be local anesthesia we learned about oral medicine topical medicine next is local anesthesia local anesthesia can be infiltrated or applied to a part to induce a loss of sensation in that part loss of sensation will help the person be able to be less sensitive to that pain there is a temporary loss of sensation by inhibiting nerve conduction stopping pain nerve conduction it is used in dental procedures mainly and then minor surgery also used during suturing and sometimes during dressing next are non pharmacological management these uh, are something that to be preferred on a daily basis or we prefer when we are suffering from pain hot and cold application meditation distraction imagery stain Music therapy, massage, yoga, and acupuncture. Same is transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation. I'll explain them one by one. Heat and cold application. Heat application to a pain site helps to relieve pain because oxygen supply to the pain increases because of the increasing heat. Whereas cold therapy helps to stop or inhibit the growth of microorganism. and that also relieves the pain the application of cold to any injured site reacts with the constricted blood vessels and then it stops the pain at that site next is meditation during meditation a deep breathing technique is used that deep breathing technique induces the movement of diaphragm and chest muscles which helps to relieve the pain by balancing pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide inside the body it also helps to relieve many kind of muscular pain acute and chronic pain and helps to supply enough oxygen to the brain this is distraction when the pain is acute and we just need a distraction for a few times so that the episode of pain will Uh, pass away go away then watching television watching computers can be used as a nice distraction this is guided imagery this is related to somehow similar to meditation a person starts to meditate this can be done either individually or in a group okay there is a person who carries on the guided guided words guided scenario and then people sit together they meditate and they mentally go towards wherever the guide leads to guide might create a situation like we are in this place we are at this field we are having this food and they follow imaginarily they follow whatever the guide says that helps them to distract being distracted from the friend act as a guided imagery and helps to relieve from the pain this is tns transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation by the use of electricity by using these wires at a certain place of the body 
pain can be relieved okay we place the pads here four to five pads are used and then low very very much low amount of electricity is applied to the place that helps in stimulation of the nerve stimulation of the muscles that might relieve the pain this is music therapy music creates such an effect in the body that helps to relax the muscles of the body relax the heart relax everything relax the muscle of the body that is music therapy that helps to relieve from the pain this is massage massaging is all about maintaining blood circulation wherever pain persists if we massage at that side and nearby that side what actually happens is blood circulation is maintained and eventually pain will be relieved this is yoga yoga is related not just to physical body it is related to body mind and spirit by performing yoga we are maintaining a balanced blood circulation to each part of the body if we do it properly so in that way we are curing ourselves physically mentally and spiritually this is acupuncture in acupuncture they use a needle at the pain site four or more than four needles are inserted exactly at the point where there is nerve connection after inserting what happens is the nerve which were not working previously or suffering from some disease peripheral neuropathy or any kind of other disease nerve becomes stimulated and starts working again starts functioning again that is all about acupuncture now we come to nerve management of pain first of all we should assess the cause of pain is the cause acute chronic what is the cause that will help to determine starting point from where to start the management we can assess site intensity and frequency of pain and measure the vital signs that will help us to gain knowledge about what is the baseline data of the patient what is the present condition we also can maintain correct position maintaining correct position and changing the position will help us to maintain the body blood circulation also provide comfort to the patient we can apply medical and non medical pharmacological non pharmacological techniques that way acute pain can be relieved but chronic for chronic pain we need a long term planning long term care we can also assess sign for difficulty in airway because if there is difficulty in airway other complications might occur complication related to ventilation might occur so there is there is a requirement of prompt management immediate management if there is any difficulty in air next is effectiveness of intervention should be assessed at the time whichever technique you apply medical non medical non pharmacological whichever technique you apply just once in a while once in a four hour once in an eight hour check the condition of the patient is your therapy working or not if not you might need to change the therapy change the technique lastly patient needs to be educated about what is the nature of the pain how long will it take, take to completely cure the pain and what can be its possible complication educating about everything to the patient will help the nurse to make the patient aware and make the patient prepared for whatever situation comes so these are the nursing management Thank you so much. Next topic will be discussed in next video.